Here's a quick tip for those wanting to set up Ableton Live with the MPC2 software. I've been asked this a few times recently by new MPC owners confused about how to set up the MPC plugin and how to access the separate outputs. So in this clip, I'll show you how it's done using Ableton Live 11 and MPC software 2.9.1. If you find this useful, plant the thumbs up on the clip below and punch that subscribe button for more. So assuming a few things, Firstly, you've installed the MPC2 software and its VST plugin. Secondly, your MPC is connected via the USB cable. And last of all, your MPC is in controller mode. Then from within Ableton, create a new MIDI track, navigate to your plugins folder. If you can't find your MPC plugin, try typing in MPC in the search field above. Once you've got your MPC plugin, drag it over and drop it onto the coloured header of your MIDI track. Now we can set up your first MPC bus by creating an audio track. Starting with the first audio track, from the top drop down list, below audio from, you should see an option in there for MPC. Select that, and then from the next drop down list, you should be able to select any one of the 15 stereo pairs. And these stereo pairs are your MPC's auxiliary buses used for routing in audio. The default outputs for your MPC are buses 1 and 2, and they're coupled up with your MPC plugin on the MIDI channel inside Ableton. So on the audio channel that we're looking at, you have the option to select any route from your MPC starting from buses 3 and 4, upwards of up to 31 and 32 and depending on the spec of your machine, potentially up to 47 and 48. So I'll choose buses 3 and 4, and then I'll duplicate this channel with Mac Command D, configure the duplicate to use audio from buses 5 and 6, then duplicate this track, and for this next track, I'd want audio from MPC buses 7 and 8. And I could do this 15 times and then I'd have 16 stereo pairs in total that are exclusively routed from my MPC-X, my MPC-Live, Live 2, MPC-1, etc. Now I'll put a reverb plugin on my audio tracks that are routed to MPC buses 5 and 6. And now I'll put some delay on my audio tracks that are routed to MPC buses 7 and 8. Now if I venture over to my MPC, I just loaded in a basic program with a few sounds off camera. But with sounds loaded, I can now visit the pad mixer or channel mixer. Click on the route page. Select a sound I want by tapping the pads. And then use the data wheel to scroll through the various buses that can route your audio through to Ableton. So if I wanted this sound with the Ableton reverb on it, I'd route this sound through bus five and six. Or if I wanted some delay instead, I could just route it through buses seven and eight, where the Ableton delay plugin is inserted. If you're not sure how you could make use of all this, then it's really handy for summing out the audio in your songs on your MPC. But with this kind of routing, you get to use all the plugins you have in Ableton, but on your sounds in your MPC. I'm quite a big advocate of this because when you're using the MPC standalone, you're limited to the eight physical outputs on the rear of the MPC. But in controller mode, you've virtually got 32 independent outputs via the one USB cable. And then you're only physically limited to the outputs on the audio interface you might be using. If you have an audio interface with 32 physical outputs, you could achieve 32 independent buses from your MPC and have them playing in real time into something like a 32 channel analog mixer. And then doing analog mixes of your MPC songs could be achieved on a large mixing desk with more channels than you'll ever need. 
and I've seen a certain spec of Mac handle 48 auxiliary buses or 24 stereo pairs from an MPC inside Logic Pro. So it's within the realm of possibility to achieve 48 buses, but to think that it can be achieved with this feature is quite amazing considering that for 35 years, MPCs could only provide eight outputs. Anyway, you can set up your Ableton audio channels and route as many MPC buses as you need, or probably wise to name a bunch of them and then group them together with Mac Command G. Then save that as a template via the Preferences menu. Or if you're on Ableton version 11, there's now a file menu entry for Save Live Set as Template. Once you've got a template saved, it's all ready to go next time you want to use Ableton with your MPC in controller mode. I hope that's helped you out. If so, plant a big thumbs up on the clip below and punch that subscribe button to see more studio tips coming soon. Thanks for watching.